Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here and being so smiley. This is wonderful. Um, so throughout this short presentation, I'll be reading some quotes from different teachers of mine that just um, resonated with me throughout the week, throughout the weekend, yesterday, this morning, um, because they uh, speak to our times and speak to the way that I approach self-care. Here's the first one. There are many times throughout life when you're inspired to be your best. But it's rare in history when life is required to be its best. Required. Where there are no options. You're either at your best or it's over. Right now is one of those times. Either wake up, stand up, and show up all the way up. Or pack it up. I believe we're in those times right now. And self-care is not a nice thing, a nicety, a want to, it's a have to, it's a must. Especially for those of us who have young people in our care in any way. So as Adia mentioned, um, I recently left the nonprofit world. Um, I was there in various capacities doing a lot of work with um, the belief gap, changing the belief gap, that was black brilliance, um, and other, other systems change um, programs and initiatives to address things like systemic racism and implicit bias and systemic racism. <laughs> um, and I left because I was getting really burned out um, and everyone around me was too. And as a healing professional as well, uh, it was just abundantly clear. I couldn't ignore that I needed to go back into healing full time um, because that's what was lacking in my experience. That's what was lacking in the room when we would have these challenging conversations um, about what to do and realize that we don't know what to do and people getting triggered and myself as a black woman in the room talking about systemic racism, talking about, you know, as a parent as well, um, I noticed how much I was using strategies and technologies of acupuncture, yoga, meditation, all of the time. I do it before a meeting, during a meeting, after a meeting, and I thought, huh, if this is what it takes for me to just get to, to level, um, then for those who don't have these technologies in the room, what are they experiencing? What I observed, because I can't speak to anyone else's experience, was that it isn't just a lot of talk, but that everyone is having an experience. We're all getting triggered when we're talking about traumatic things because we all carry trauma within ourselves. Um, and that's real. But there were no resources in the room to help us work through that so that we could transform that energy. Um, instead, we were perpetuating, continuing to perpetuate the dynamics between the dominant power structure in the, in the room and those who were requiring change but didn't have the pull, whether it be because of their background and identity or their status, um, to do so. So I'm focusing on that now, <laughs> and uh, I'm glad that you're here. So Satnam, that means I am truth, and that's what I'm here to speak about is my truth. Um, I'm gonna move on, I'm gonna see, I don't use clickers that often, so let's see what happens. Okay, I wanted to briefly touch on self-care for youth. Um, I believe that Black Brilliance was actually a healing process. We um, deliberately, found um, black seniors, senior students, high school students, many of them from Minneapolis. Hello, superintendent. Um, I hope you've seen the documentary. If not, I'll send it to you. Um, and we let them lead the narrative. So this, is with, this was with uh, Twin Cities PBS, um, but it was a national production. And we let them tell us how they wanted to be perceived, how they wanted their story to go. And that was an empowering and healing um, and healing process for them. So this idea of safe space is one that um, it, it, you can't just create safe space, right, for youth or for anyone by saying, this is a safe space. 
what it means is that you've been a consistent, trusted individual. You've come through, you are who you say you are, you do what you say you're gonna do. And there are lots of opportunities for all of us to create these spaces for our, ch our children and our youth. Um, so quickly, I wanted to show a clip, an example of uh, healing and self-care for youth from the Washburn Black Box group that we had in Black Brilliance. And I, Rachel, is that ready? Hopefully you'll enjoy it, it's very short. Um, I teach theater at Washburn High School. I run a social justice Black Box theater program. Truth is! Ishe, she has been a student in my program. Um, this is her third year. And basically it's a type of theater that highlights youth voice um, pertaining to issues in their community and social justice issues. Everything that the students generate comes from them. It's their words, their scenes, their characters. I've noticed the language in between the lines in this building. And it says that I'm not equal to those around me. But because with your mirrors, I do not fit your equation, I need to be subtracted and divided into features that look like yours. I rock the backpack with the books, zipped up until my knowledge becomes acknowledged. I have taught myself that my drive for knowledge and social justice cannot be quenched by just the white standard of it. Three, two, one, action. So when I got into Black Box Theater, it was like, oh, That's good. so I can't talk about my feelings. Washington, uh, or sorry, Washburn Black Box Social Justice Theater. They've got shows coming up next week. Go see them. Um, <laughs> thanks. And right now what I'm doing, uh, well, amongst another, an, a number of other things, is teaching a curriculum called Yoga for Youth. Yoga, in this case, uh, stands for Your Own Greatness Affirmed. Okay, so um, I'm at a program uh, with probational youth out of Neighborhood House right now, and I'm also teaching at a, an el elementary school in North Minneapolis. Um, and in our classes, this is what we do. They're, the key point is to f allow them to connect with and grow their power and the truth of their identity. So we give them the space to do that. Um, I give them tools uh, for health, healing, and self-regulation um, and offer an experience of peace and relaxation. But the biggest message that's repeated is the law of cause and effect. You always have control over something, so let's practice taking control over what you have control over now, okay? And I also, um, I also represent a caring and consistent adult. Some of the other principles for yoga, with Yoga for Youth um, and with acupuncture, actually, are that every unresolved feeling and emotion finds a place to hide in the body, okay? It finds a place. And when we acknowledge that and we use different practices um, to address them, to work with them, to process through and transform them, then we can release them or, and use them um, to our benefit. But when we ignore them, we don't acknowledge them, then they will still come, <laughs> come up and um, surface at some point, probably when we don't have control, probably when we least expect it. Um, and that's, um, that's problematic. So meditation, um, is one tool, it's essential, uh, for providing this relaxation experience, one that's other than sleep. So we focus on not just rest and yoga, but meditation, so that they can say, I'm, I've been awake, and I've been at peace. All right, turning the page. I have a lot of things in my hands, very good. But we're gonna focus on you, okay? So creating sacred space in class or in any environment of yours, you can uh, substitute the word sacred for anything that you feel more comfortable with if that doesn't work for you. Um, but as a teacher, a mentor, an adult, a person in a workspace with relationships with other adults around you doing important systems change, uh, you know, life changing work, um, the most important person is you. And so we're gonna focus the rest of our time on you and your vibration. We are all made of energy. Our cells, they vibrate, okay? We're all connected. You can feel your energy. You can feel the energy of someone next to you. So your energy, 
when you walk into a classroom, when you walk into an after school program, when you walk into a meeting, affects what's going on there. And if you are the one in control of the classroom, then you are the one who's gonna determine how the experience of everyone else in that room is gonna go, including the kids who are your students. Okay, so self-care means working on connecting with and knowing yourself. And so if there's no other message that you walk away with tonight, this is my key thing. This requires daily practice. Mark, Dr. Mark talked about um, repetition, repeated experiences, all right? You need, I need, to connect with a practice that works for you that you can repeat every single day. To retrain, to train, retrain yourself to connect with yourself so that you can listen and know, where am I? Where's my energy right now? I had someone, I had a student come up at me and took me by surprise, knocked me off guard. Where's my energy right now? How do I shift? How do I shift so that I can show up and be the best support for that student as possible? So I ask you to care enough about yourself and the, and the young people in your care to commit to your own healing and wellness. So some quick self-care myths. I'll go very quickly. Self-care is not for me. I need enough money, access, and time. Someone else can do this for me. Um, it's only worth it if I can be perfect. Throw perfection out the window. This is about consistency, not about perfection, okay? Um, it only takes place in a yoga studio at a spa or on vacation, and I'm never there. <laughs> not true. Or it's only for times when I am in crisis. And that's exactly when you want to be well-practiced, well-versed. You want to have filled your well with your daily practice so that when you are in crisis or when someone around you is in crisis, you can actually be the, st the stability. You can provide the light in the darkness and you can steer the ship um, to the direction where it should be going. All right, so that speaks for itself. Self-care equals daily practice. Repeated experiences to wire and rewire our brains. Exactly. And this means changing habits. You know, a habit is a subconscious chain reaction between the mind, the glandular system, and the nervous system. We develop habits at a very young age, uh, and some of them serve us and some of them don't. So when you do a practice over time, repeatedly, intentionally, you can rewire that chain reaction. You can develop uh, new, deeply ingrained habits that serve your highest good. 40 days builds a new habit. 90 days helps to really establish that new habit in your cells and your consciousness. 120 days will help to um, confirm the new habit so you're just, you're solidifying it in your physiology. And 1,000 days, and I've done this once, <laughs> means that you really transform. You, um, and you can do this intentionally with different things. If you're working on anger, if you're working on guilt, shame, uh, self-loathing, um, any of these things, there are specific meditations you can do for these number of days that will change your life in the way that you want it to change. It could change your digestion, negative self-talk. All right, so this is the part I really wanted to get to, are the practices. I wanted to get to the practices because we're gonna do some breathing today. Ha uh ha. -huh. And um, we're also going to do a short uh, mantra meditation. Breath and sound are two of the most effective technologies at transforming your energy. So, I want you to start breathing. Long and deep through your nose, in and out through your nose. Excuse me, through your nose. I'm gonna get a sip of water. And now, if you have room around you, what I want you to do is place your hands at your waist. I'll put this away so I can show you. So. So 
Use the mic. There's a balloon around your waist, and you are breathing it bigger, and your hands and your thumbs are moving outward, okay? In through your nose, breathe it bigger, and then out through your nose, and it gets smaller. Okay, it's, it's a subtle movement, but that's where you want to be breathing from. So let's practice that for a few seconds. Do you want to start the music? Thank you. Okay, just keep doing that. If you can close your eyes and do this, all the better. In and out slowly through your nose. Very good. This is a long, deep breath. This will calm your central nervous system. And now I want you to if you have your eyes closed, roll them up to the brow point, or what's sometimes called the third eye point, and focus on that breath. It's an expansive breath. Feel yourself calm. Great. And now, I want you to try imagining, you're still breathing, imagine that that breath is coming in and out in through your nose, excuse me, and out through your heart. Imagine the breath exiting through your heart and fill yourself up with this breath. This is a breath that you can send to yourself when you need healing, you need calm. You can also imagine sending this breath out to anyone in need. It's silent, no one will know you're doing it, and it's very powerful. Good. I'm gonna stop and slowly open your eyes. There's not enough time to really get deeply into these, um, but it's an example. So that was called heart breath. It's my favorite. Okay. Hey, come on. Come on. There we go. Um, the second strategy is, is sound. All right, so these two strategies do not require money or any extra anything on you. Your breath and then the sounds that come out of you and the sounds that you hear. Um, and in yoga and meditation, we call this mantra. Man is mind, and tra is way. So it's the way of the mind. And you can control how your mind works by repeating certain phrases. They can be phrases that you come up with yourself. They can be phrases that you use already, and they could be very damaging to you or to anyone else. Any repeated phrase will affect you at a cellular level, and that energetic level affects your entire consciousness because we are energetic beings. So, anything you say or hear? The next, um, the next practice will be the I am meditation. And I apologize for the speed of this, but I wanna give you a taste. So, the I am meditation is like this. 
you're going to put up your hand like this in front of your heart. Maybe half a foot away, a little more. We're just going to repeat the phrase, I am, and bring our hands towards our heart. Don't touch it, but bring it close. I am. Say that with me. I am. Good. And then we're going to bring it out farther and repeat, I am. And then bring it back to neutral. So you've got three positions, starting, then come in, say, I am. Go out, say, I am. And come back to neutral. We're just going to start this right now and do it for one minute. And I will, I'll show you. OK. So we're going to follow what you hear. It's the I am, I am. And you'll go in, I am, out, I am, then neutral. And it's just taking a long time to get there. <laughs> so we're going to start at neutral. Here we go. I am. Oh, didn't do it. So I'm just going to start, because we don't have time. All right. I am, I am, neutral. I am, I am, back to neutral. I am, I am. Close your eyes again, once you get it. Good, keep going. I am, I am. I am, I am. Here it comes. Keep going. I am, I am. I am. Keep going. Keep going as I tell you about this. This meditation reminds you of your true nature, of who you truly are. When you say to yourself, I am, the mind asks, I am what? Then that's usually followed by emotions or descriptive words, happy, tall, sad, mother, wife, partner. The meditation replaces common, mundane identifications with a powerful statement that helps you build your true identity by reminding you of your infinite qualities. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, I gotta wrap this up. <laughs> so this is not an easy thing to do, daily practice, but it's really important, and it may require you to give up some things, because you need to make time, okay? Um, so time, social media, <laughs> other ways in which you distract yourself from connecting with you, um, but I need you to show up and to keep up. Don't do more. Stop and take care of yourself. Ah. Okay. Commit to yourself. This is where I want to stop. So, where do you go with this? Start with three minutes of breathing. Long deep breath, heart breath, any of that. In the morning, right when you wake up, or right before you go to bed, start with three minutes. Or write a mantra for yourself. You can do the one we did or write something, a very simple phrase that makes you feel good and repeat it to yourself in the morning when you wake up or in the evening before you go to bed or both, okay? You could read inspirational text out loud, this is that sound, write affirmations. We didn't talk about movement, but walk, move without the cell phone in front of you. I'm taking my walk and I'm checking Facebook. Oh my gosh, I got so many likes, no. That's distracting you. I need you to get to a place where you're gonna be able to feel what's going on with you and listen. Compassion for self. Be consistent. That's my information. Um, I really hope, especially in the times that we are in now, that you will understand how valuable you are 
that you, will under, you should understand what a difference you make by just showing up and the energy that you bring and that you will take the time each day to bring that energy up, to commit to and love yourself so that you can commit to and love others. Thank you.